Now, I know some of you long for the days when simple pop culture just wasn't political. You know, that, that fictionalized time in the conceptualized past in which the stuff that you grew up with wasn't an oblique metaphor for something else that you just simply weren't old enough to understand. Well, in the 1950s, the House and American Activities Commission thought exactly the same thing. And out of those investigations, a self-regulatory body called the Comics Code Authority began regulating what could and could not be put in comic books. What I'm about to tell you is one of the forgotten stories that challenged that code and exposed it for the racist institution that it actually was. Hi, I'm Dan Umpton, and this is the Doomcast. Now, anytime somebody institutes censorship, they ostensibly want to prevent people from being exposed to objectionable material, right? Uh, drugs, sex, violence, communism, labor movements, uh, you know, people who don't like racism, but usually censorship by conservatives ends up exposing itself for what it actually is. In the 1950s in comics, horror and sci-fi were king, and nobody was publishing more of that than EC Comics. And in 1953, Al Feldstein penned a story for Bill Gaines' EC Comics in Weird Fantasy. The story followed an astronaut named Tarleton who traveled from Earth to a distant planet of robots. Their whole society was comprised of identical robots with AI, some of which were orange and some of which were blue. But the blue ones were heavily discriminated against. A whole planet of humanoid robots created by human beings that had left them to their own devices for thousands of years just to create 1950s era racism on their planet all over again. Wouldn't you know it? As the story closes, the astronaut informs his orange liaison that due to their bigotry, they aren't going to be ready for entrance in the Galactic Republic. And as he leaves, he removes his helmet, revealing that he, in fact, was a black man. All right, that story's pretty heavy-handed, but for 1953, it was very progressive. But EC also published a lot of horror, a lot of war comics, and a lot of science fiction. And so, after the publication of Wortham's Seduction of the Innocent, Bill Gaines himself, the owner of EC Comics, helped found the Comics Code Authority, a rigorous censorship institution that Gaines hoped would help prevent eventual federal regulation of comic books. And this whole censorship institution really quickly got out of Gaines' hands. This Comics Code that Gaines now refused to join stuck around for the next 50 or so years, and it gradually got a little bit more lax, but initially, it even prevented comics with titles like the words horror and weird, which was like almost everything that Bill Gaines' EC Comics published. So by 1956, with HUAC and blacklisting and uh, the Red Scare in full swing, EC has an original story that's rejected by the Comics Code Authority, and they can't publish it, because the character, the main character in it, was a black man. So Gaines, being a bit of a contrarian, to say the least, decides that he's going to reprint that story about the orange and the blue alien robots called Judgment Day, and he's going to put it in that story's place. It doesn't take a literary genius to understand that the point of that whole story about the orange and blue robots was uh, racial bigotry is a systemic thing and it fucking sucks, man. Uh, but amazingly, after reviewing that story, the Comics Code responds with, Hey, this story is also great, but could you make the character not a black guy? Which, if you recall, the first story had been rejected because the main character was black, but they figured, I think, that they could get around it since the entire point of the story was that the character was a black man. So Feldstein and Keynes responded with, uh, Bro, that's the point of the story. To which the Comics Code at that point asked, Even if you can make the character not a black man, could you please not have drops of sweat twinkling on his face like stars? Really? There's multiple first-hand accounts of people who overheard this telephone call Bill Gaines had with the Comics Code Authority about this story. And everybody agrees that to Gaines' eternal credit, he screamed, Fuck you! into the telephone, slammed it on his desk, and then ordered his editors to print the story anyway. And it ran. The story that censors so horribly misunderstood as to make the author's point for them. And it was basically the last EC comic to get any kind of approval. Gaines was moving his company out of the field anyway, and retained publication rights to only one magazine thereafter, which was Mad Magazine. 
But the legacy of the comics code and how it influenced comics was enormous. Within a few years, almost anything horror, sci-fi, romance, western, or war went the way of the dodo, and the fundamental shift of comic books to operatic capes and tights held on. But Gaines' stalwart refusal to give in to censorship has not been forgotten, nor the legacy of Feldstein's original story. Thanks everybody for watching this little piece of forgotten comics history. This has been the Doomcast, and we'll see you next week.